So welcome to Techno Dad Life, where we build, learn, and create as a community. And on today's episode, we're going to be installing Nextcloud Pi into a Docker. And what I found is this is the fastest, easiest way to install Nextcloud in a Docker. If you're looking for an even easier way to install Nextcloud and you don't mind using a whole machine for Nextcloud, then I would use the Nextcloud Pi uh, just image for the Raspberry Pi and then you can just use your whole Raspberry Pi. But today we're going to be installing it in Docker. So let's take a look. And a special thanks to all my patrons who without your support this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, think about subscribing and supporting the channel you love. So first we want to go to Nextcloud Pi and all you have to do is search for Nextcloud Pi and this will come up. And before we do that, we're going to need a couple things. So we have to download PuTTY and install that. You click here to download that. Next on Open Media Vault, we want to go to the Open uh, OMV extras and make sure we have Docker, in, Docker installed and it is installed and running. Once we have those two things done, then we're going to scroll down on this page. We're going to go to documentation. Go over here to getting started with NCP Docker. And then what we're going to do is actually start right here. So. Basically, we have two different things here. So we want to either pull the x86 or the ARM HF image. And so if you have a Raspberry Pi and you're doing this on Docker, you want the ARM HF. Uh, or if you have other some other single board computer, you want to do the ARM HF. Uh, if you're just using a regular server, then you want to do the x86. For me, I'm doing the regular x86, so we're going to copy this. We're going to open PuTTY and we're going to put in our server address right there. And then we're going to click open. And then we're going to log in as root and our server password. Hit enter. And now we're going to paste that Docker image that we just copied in there, and this will download the Docker image. Okay, so once that's done, we need to find out what our local disk labels are. And so we're going to type in lsblk. And here you can see that right there, my disk is labeled slash server slash dev dot disk dot by label dash 32 GB. And so then you should copy this and paste this into a word processing program because we're going to be using this later. And so we're going to do that right now. And so if you look at the directions here again, to make a custom storage volume, we need to actually use our disk label and for uh, Nextcloud to uh, use it. So we're going to here instead of uh, slash media NC data, we're going to put in the slash serve dash dev disk blah blah blah. And I'll show you what that looks like. So next we're going to make a Nextcloud uh, data file with the uh, using the folder that we just found. And so if we look here, uh, what we did is, so we make directory, mk direct, put our disk label, and then we already have the app data folder, and then we're going to make a folder in that called NC data. Hit enter. And now let's just make sure that folder was made. So we're going to put in ls, our disk name again, slash app data, and then hit enter. And then over here we can say, see it says NC data and that is our Nextcloud data folder. And so the next thing we need to change on that disk, we need to change the no exec permission. 
And so basically Debian, which is what Open Media Vault is based upon, has uh, no exec uh, by default. And so what will happen is that will make it so Nextcloud can't work. So we need to uh, delete that. So we're going to type in nano uh, space etc slash open media vault slash config dot xml and so this is where the uh, folder uh, file is that we want to delete then hit enter and then uh, what we're going to do is press f6 and that will bring up search and then we're going to type in no exec then hit enter and that takes us right to the no exec sometimes you have to go down a little bit so you can he see here this is our disk again right there dev.label slash 32 and so we're going to just delete and then next we're going to hit control x and then Y for yes. And now we're back here. And so, so next we're going to do one of two things. So for Open Media Vault 5, this is salt based. So we're going to put in OMB dash salt deploy run Fs tab. And that will make the changes permanent. Hit enter. And there you can see the changes succeeded. So now in OMV4, what you'll type is OMV make config f stab and I'll leave links in the description to two different posts to find out exactly what you need to do for your situation but this is what you do on OMV5. So now what we're going to do is go back to our OMV we're going to go to general settings and for our port we're going to change our port and why we're doing that is because uh, Nextcloud runs on 80 and 443 and so what we're going to do is just change Open Media Vault and when we do do this we actually have to log or uh, go to our server a little differently and so first I'll show you this so we're going to put 81 there click save apply and yes and then that will show an error when this is all done. And so now what's happened is the server has been reconfigured and it's going to be on port 81 now. So we're going to click OK. We're going to go up here, put colon 81, and then hit Enter. And so now we're back to our server. So what I would suggest is bookmarking this so you can find that later because you're going to be coming back and forth to this page and you want to be able to find it easily. If you just type in this address right now, nothing will happen. Uh, once we have Nextcloud installed, if you just type in the IP address without the 81 on there, it will go directly to Nextcloud. So we're going to go back to the Nextcloud Pi page and if we look at it so we've already made our directory so the next part is we're going to copy this and place it in a word processing program so then we can modify it a little bit okay so if we take a look at this uh, we have our docker run and if we go over here you can see there we've added our disk name so slash app data slash nc data and then on the end we have the next cloud pi x86 because i'm running an x86 machine and then i put in my ip address after that so then what we're going to do is copy this and then paste that into putty hit enter and now that will have started the uh, docker if we scroll down a little bit more on this, you can see right here to get to the Docker logs to see what's happening. We paste in Docker logs dash F next cloud pi and when we hit enter, uh, here it says it cannot download the calendar app. So usually when it says that, then it won't work. So what I suggest is trying again. 
and you hit Control C to exit. So next we'll paste the modified uh, Docker command in the terminal, hit enter. And so now NextCloud is running. We're going to put in docker logs dash f nextcloud, hit enter. And this will give us our logs and we'll be able to see if it's working properly. And here it says initiation done and there doesn't seem to be any error. So then we can hit control C to exit. Now we're going to copy our IP address. Paste that there, and here we come to the activation page. And so we need to do two things. So basically, there are two parts to this Docker. So one is the NextCloud Pi part, which sort of automates a few different things. And then there is just the regular NextCloud part. And so we're going to start out uh, doing the NextCloud Pi part, and then we're going to do the NextCloud part. And so first thing we need to do is copy our username, which is the same for both of these. So click right here, and then that will copy it to your clipboard, and then paste that into the word processing program. We're going to go down here, do the same. The next thing we're going to do is click Activate. And we're going to be using those passwords numerous times, so make sure you have them handy. Uh, you can also just uh, print those out, but it's much easier if you have them already. And so now we're going to log in, and this is to the NextCloud Pi part, which is very confusing. Paste in the NextCloud Pi part of your password, hit sign in, and so we're going to run the configuration wizard. So we're going to click run, and external access, and yes, we want to access outside of the house, and uh, I like doing my port forwarder manually because then it works. So I will do it manually. So we're going to go to our router, click on port forwarding, and here you can see our servers at uh, dot 11. And I've already changed these. So as it says in the wizard here, we need to forge port 80 and 443. And here we did, here's our server address, port 80, 80. TCP, UDP, 443, 443, and then click Save. Then come back to the wizard, click Continue, and here it wants to know if we need want to put in a DDS, a DDNS provider, and so we're going to use DuckDNS, because I've already done a couple videos about DuckDNS, so we're going to click Skip here. And if we go to NextCloud Pry right now, it won't, won't work properly. So we're going to go to the web panel. And so here we're going to be doing a couple things before we actually start NextCloud so it works properly. So we're going to go over to the config section here, scroll down, click on trusted domains, and we're going to change this to the domain of our server. Uh, we already added that as when we started the Docker, but this just makes sure it remembers it. And there you can see it says it's applied. And then if you want to change your password, you would click on NC password and change it. I sort of like the long password, so I'm just going to leave that as is. Next, we're going to go to duckdns.org. And we're going to sign in. And so here, what you would do to create a new domain is you would type it in here, add domain. I've already added one, Pumpkin Life. And so we're going to use that as the name of our server. So we go back to the panel here. And this time we're going to go down to networking, click on Duck DNS, click Activate, put in our Duck DNS name. And then copy our token, which is up here in the token section. Paste that here. Then click Apply. And so now DuckDNS is now activated. Next, we're going to activate Let's Encrypt. So we're going to click on Let's Encrypt. And so we're going to put in our uh, DuckDNS domain. And then we're going to put in our email address. 
and that will notify this user and then we're going to click apply so our let's encrypt was successful so now let's go to our next cloud server so we're going to copy our IP address again and we're gonna paste that in here click advanced and then click proceed and so now we're into next cloud and so now we need to put in our passwords from before NCP and then this is the password that was on the bottom of that page which you saved of course we're going to click login and then that takes us to the next cloud login and so we're gonna just quickly go through this you get to keep your files there's an app store uh, I would download the different apps here so while we're doing other things so I'm gonna download the Windows app and then download either Google or Android app uh, down here at the bottom are interesting tutorials if you want to do this connect your calendar you can connect this to your Google calendar or if you want to uh, you can add your contacts access files via web Dave uh, become part of the community and so here we are into Nextcloud so to get started uh, there's a documents folder and a photos folder uh, it does not play uh, media to start out with so we're gonna add first we're gonna add some folders so we click that plus there this one's gonna be called music so we can add music hit the arrow and then we're going to add a movies folder and then a TV folder And then a ebook folder. And so that is the basics of what I need for it documents, ebooks, movies, music, photos, TV. Uh, now we're going to add an app so that it can actually play music. So we're going to click on the wheel here, click on apps. We're just going to go up here, click music and if we click on that you can see it tells us all about what it can do we're going to click download and enable and then that will download and install that and if we look at the top now we have a music button and we're going to go down to settings and create a path to our music folder and then choose and then we're going to go back to our files and we're going to drag some music into there so I'm going to drag a music folder into our music file and it will copy it there now I'm going to open up the music folder and there's our different things and so here we can't actually play it from the we have to press scan from albums and then the music will come up and if we click on one you can see there's a there's an arrow next to it which plays the music and so that's how we get music playing now if we go back to files we're going to place a folder in our movies file click on that and you can see that works already so we don't need to do anything there okay so we have the next cloud on our server but the way it's set up is we're not actually able to access the other folders on our server because it's in a docker and everything is secure so what we're going to do is add what they call external access but really it's just external just means anything outside of next cloud so let's do that now so we're going to click on the cog again click apps and then we're going to scroll down to external storage right there click enable now we're going to click on the cog again click settings we're going to go down to administration and then click on external storage 
and we're going to give this folder name SMB because we're going to access the folder through Samba sharing. Click Add Storage and we're going to click SMB. So now the host name is simply the IP address of our server. And the folder that we want to share is actually the media folder. And then we need to put in our server name and then our password for our server. And then click the check mark and then that will check to see if it works. And there you can see the green check mark says it works. Now we're going to go to the personal section here and go to external storages. And so this is a little confusing because they have external storages there and then external storages here. But we now we want to use the top one. And so it says we have an SMB share. Uh, it's called SMB. SMB SIFS username and password and configuration. We're going to click the check mark. And then it says there's a warning, but we're just going to click that again. And it just takes a second to actually recognize it. So now if we go up to our file section, now we have an SMB share and there's nothing in it right now. So let's drag something into our on our server into that folder. So here we'll do this. So here now you can see we're in our virtual server. We're going to click on media. There's nothing in there. And then we're going to drag a file in there. So it's called short moment. And then we're going to close that. Let's refresh this. And there you can see the short moment video is. And then let's just click on it. And we can close that. And so that's how you add an external drive to your uh, Nextcloud server. Okay, so next what we're going to do is download the Nextcloud app onto our iPad and just see if we can access our server. So we have the app downloaded. Click Login. And then we put in our server address. And then hit Enter or Login. Log into your accounts. And then here is our password. And then for our password, uh, what we're going to do is just copy it. And then log in. And we're going to grant access. And so now we have access on our iPad to the next cloud. And just for example, so we'll just look at the music. Here's our Christmas music. If we go to movies, there's our one movie and let's go to our SMB share. And there's the movie on our SMB share. So Basically, super easy to set up. Just takes however much time this video took to make. Uh, probably less because there's no explaining. Uh, and if you like this video, make sure you like it. And if you want me to do more videos about Nextcloud, put some comments in the uh, section below and I'll do some other things. Uh, I was thinking about a couple other things. So one is converting videos uh, in a word processor sort of on your next cloud. There's a whole bunch of other things you can do. So, uh, so just if you want to see that, just uh, leave it below. And that's it for today. Hope you have a great time and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.